Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger and my friends. Today we are here to talk about the winners and losers of the big season two patch of the King of Fighters 15. So it's been out for about a week and change now and we've had time to let a lot of the changes sink in. And well, frankly, to be fair, most of the cast are winners. Like even some of the people who quote unquote lost in reality are still just about the top of the tower, you know, the top of the game. So don't feel too bad for them. But yeah, some people definitely made out extra good and some people, well, maybe they felt the hammer just a little bit harder than the rest. So let's talk about it here and let's go over a bunch of the characters I feel are the winners and losers of season two of KOF 15. So the first character I'd like to talk about is Leona and it's mostly on the back of the one change, but it's a change I love. And that is the change to close D where the enemy is just a lot closer overall than they used to be before when uh, you hit them, which means all sorts of fancy EX heart attack combos are now possible off this button. Now you didn't need this before to get these combos far from it, but a lot of the old routes, like you had no time to realistically hit confirm, like say like this, like crouch, like kick, crouch, like punch and EX heart attack. This will naturally combo, like I got the link after the fact, you can see here, but only if you do it right away, like you can't hit confirm it. Like normally you do that, which is much slower. And like that will go into EX heart attack, sure, but it'll never link at that point. Either you're too slow for the link or you're literally just too far away because of the pushback. It only works if you do it literally as fast as possible timing, which just really isn't hit confirmable versus close D. Two hitting, so easy to hit confirm. Like here, I have guard set the random, got it. Nope, nothing, 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 nothing. Got it, right? Like it's so easy to hit confirm. It's just, it's a great quality of life change because these combos are pretty good. Four fifty for half of a bar is well in excess of average. Like, yeah, I guess I did the jump in, but still, whatever. You know, like the damage is very, very, very high for what it is. And of course, that's just like a mid-screen variant. There's corner variants as well, which also I want to bring in one of her other changes. So, EX Excalibur changed a bit here to be a two-hitting move. So, let me show you a corner example. So there we go. So two bars spent overall over 600 damage. Pretty good. It is a little tricky, admittedly. Uh, you do have to jump forward and then do the uh, slasher as low to the ground as possible, or you can alternatively tiger knee it, but tiger knees aren't very generous in KOF 15. Uh, and of course, that's just one potential route. You can do any other corner combos you want, but that is one of the buffs to the EX slasher, which you would nominally think is actually a nerf, but hey, works out. But yeah, there's a lot of changes going on with Leona. Like, you know, some of her buttons are better and all that's really good too. And if you want some of the old links, cause you know, the links are the fancy parts of playing Leona. Close heavy kick does link from stand close jab as well. So it just gives you even more time to hit confirm. Although it will scale your damage just a little bit. But yeah, it just makes Leona easier to play. She's uh, one of the more complex characters in this game. And just a simple change makes a lot of her more advanced and cool and fun combo routes just available to the common man. And I'm just a really big fan of that. And honestly, making the better stuff easier to do does help out the character in the end. So uh, even if I'm harping on the one change, really, I'm just a really big fan of this. Close D just being so much better and allowing for all these combo routes for Leona. It's just good. And for this reason, this is why I think she's one of the winners of the patch. Hey, so uh, just a quick bonus ender for Leona. Because I know some people are having trouble with this combo, specifically on crouchers. Uh, because it doesn't quite work the same on crouchers. But there's a way to get around this. Because normally the Moon Slasher would whiff, right? But the way to get around this is actually very simple. All you have to do is this part here, when you link to Crouch Heavy Punch into the Command Normal, just slightly delay the Command Normal. That's all it takes. And easy peasy. 
So you don't even have to delay it that much. Just don't do it as fast as possible. Just do crouch heavy punch, tiniest delay, and then do it. And it works exactly the same on standing opponents as it does uh, crouching. So if you learn that specific timing, it works on everything. So there you go. Just wanted to add that because I know some people have had issues with it. Now to quickly talk Maxima. So I've gushed about Maxima in the visual guide. And you can find that link at the end of this video. Just a lot of basic stuff like having basic hit confirms where he doesn't have to spend meter and all that kind of stuff. Thanks to uh, his light shoulder becoming faster. All oh, that's fantastic. That is truly and honestly great. And there's actually a few things I've come to realize I didn't notice right away in the visual guide. So I'd figure I'd bring that up. Now, thanks to light shoulder being a little bit faster, it actually makes some incredibly difficult things a lot easier to do. So let's use this as an example here. This is a basic hit confirm combo in the corner. Now, I know that doesn't seem too outlandish, and honestly, this was possible before. You could do this before, but uh, with the move, the shoulder charge being faster, this now makes it feasible. Like before, it was so unreasonably strict, I would never attempt to bother to do that in a match. Like, cool to show off in training mode and combos and stuff, but in a real match, I would not waste my time because the risk of a drop is so unreasonably high. Now, it's actually quite doable to the point where this probably could become like the new bread and butter in the corner. And also keep in mind here too, shoulder is indeed uh, super cancelable, right? And his supers did get a buff and they do more damage now too. So the corner damage for Maxima is going way up. So <laughs> it's a solid well over 600 damage for a bar and a half. That's pretty all right in my books. Also, speaking of the corner, things getting easier and better in the corner. Uh, since Heavy Vapor Cannon here has less overall recovery, uh, it does help a lot with stuff like it's uh, much more advantageous on block. So if you can, uh, you know, sneak this off in the corner, that's really good because you can pressure people, but also changes some combo structures because it allows for EX up grab to combo now in certain scenarios. And once again, too, for the bar invested, that's just one bar, 560 damage, pretty okay. Uh, you do have to have very strict timing on um, how high up you get with the juggle into uh, Vapor Cannon, because if uh, it's not basically at the best possible frame advantage, they won't have the height to combo into the air grab. But still, more options, more possibilities, things are looking up for Maxima. So on top of all the other stuff he got, uh, like armor, uh, the guard point on his uh, crouch heavy kick to help against low poke wars, that's fantastic. More overall guard point armor on the shoulders, uh, much more frame advantage on heavy uh, vapor cannon, that's all good. Like, I don't think Maxima is going to go beyond mid tier probably, but uh, it's still all beneficial in his favor, so therefore he's definitely a big winner in the patch. Now, when it comes to winners, we definitely have to talk Ramon. Now... He's not going to the top of the tier list. Let's get real here. But before he was at the absolute bottom in a game with so many characters, like King of Fighters has more characters in it than a lot of games combined, right? And in a game with so many characters, everyone agreed Ramon was the dog dirt worst. And now he's got a lot to work with. And a lot of it is thanks to effectively one change, the restand. So the restand is now plus and by itself, you know, being plus in someone's face when they're getting up, always advantageous. However, as well, it leads to new combo routes as he can combo into his EX grab from the restand. And if he combos into EX grab, he can also end up with another stomp because it is a true hard knockdown, so it's always guaranteed. It doesn't lead to a lot of damage, but from this stomp also leads a lot of set play. So now, since we're gonna be ending a lot of combos like this, just to show you the safe jump example, all we need to do is after this, whiff, stand like kick for timing, this is a frame kill, and then hyper hop and go for a button. And if they're there to be hit, you will hit them. And if for whatever reason they're invincible,
You'll be able to block in time, get a full punish, all that loveliness. So now every combo just has a bunch of potential. You can either take your damage and you get your plus frames. Or you can sacrifice the plus frames and just start cashing out meter and get a pretty sizable chunk of damage, even mid screen, which is just something he did not have available to him. Like you couldn't just burn meter and get damage because he was a low damage character because he just didn't have the combo routes to sustain it. So small changes lead to big deals for sure for remote. And of course he actually has a mountain of other small buffs as gone over in the visual guide. But I think that is it in the end. That is the big deal. Just allowing him to get so much more damage, so many more opportunities, so many more options just on basic combo structures. Uh, and then of course, as we showed, uh, you know, after the combo, we can get pressure with uh, safe jump setups, all that kind of stuff. These are the big things. Once again, I don't think he ain't gonna be no top tier character or nothing, but he's definitely living a much better life than he was before for the last year of the game. Hey, just a quick Rufalmonger bonus section here. I saw some people on Twitter complaining that they didn't like how they have to keep switching sides with these combos. You do not have to switch sides with these combos, FYI. If you're willing to burn just a little extra bar here for uh, the crumple with the Sobat. So start your combo as usual, then use your flip to switch sides. And now for the duration, you'll be on the same side that you were. So no losing corner progress, all that kind of stuff. So just a quick little note to keep in mind. Another person that was basically near the bottom of the tier list, kind of doing bad in the doldrums and now doing great as Darley. And one of the big changes out of the gate here is close heavy kick. So Darley maybe wasn't great, but this button is an S tier button. Why? Well, one, it's a natural low. I know it's a standing normal, but it's a low, that's good. And it is ridiculously plus, both on hit and on block. So before, if you got it, you could link it in the crouch light punch and get some small combos. The way they change it now is the knockback duration is increased, meaning it is more plus both on hit and on block. And it was already ridiculously plus already, right? But it's more plus and it knocks back away less far. So before, you know, you would do this and that would be your combo. But now, no, 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 you can get a lot bigger for one. And now links in the crouching heavy punch. And she had setups to do that before because the move is so active, you'd wake up into it, therefore have more plus frames, and then you could combo into it. But now, no, nah, you can just combo into it. End of story. And also, since it knocks back less far away, it also links into close heavy punch as well. And close heavy punch, well, geez Louise, uh, <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, not the least of which is it has an incredible amount of hit stop, so hit confirming combos, pretty easy to say the least. So now before you had to do something like this to get your combo on. Let's see how much damage we got. So overall 300 and for a single bar, that's not bad. 300 is not bad. But now also for a single bar. Oh, 430. So yeah, the damage investment for the same amount of meter is uh, going up for sure. Now that combo is a little tricky. It's going to be have something you have to practice here. Uh, because what we're doing here is after this initial setup, uh, we're doing just a tiny micro dash to get the other close heavy slash, but still well worth it. And this was something that was never possible before. So on a base level, damage is going up pretty big. Another strong change was uh, EX upgrab had the juggle anywhere property added to it. So even in combos where you would flip out, you could still get the enemy. So let's show you an example of that. So basic hit confirm here. We got it. And now hop and right there. So normally after I do my hop into uh, jump heavy, they flipped out, right? That should be the end of the combo. But since this juggles anywhere, regardless of the state they're in, even if they're flipped out, you can get it. And that's good for combos, but also it's really good for just a lot of things like her uh, light punch and heavy punch together. This is her big samurai showdown normal. It does over 200 damage in and of itself. And say if you were to block it, perfectly safe on block from the distance you do it at like it's fine right now it actually adds a lot of value because now you can actually get stuff say if you're anywhere near the corner so now boom this is just straight up more damage just uh 330 
This is something we couldn't do before. Now we can add a good chunk of damage to a situation where no extra damage was ever possible before. Like, if you got it, it hit great. Like, you did a big chunk of damage for one normal. That's really good. But now you can add extra meter and get extra damage. You get an extra 100 damage. Really good. Really solid. So just like some of the other low tiers, once again, I don't think Darley's anywhere near top tier or even necessarily even mid tier, right? But I think she's a winner just because they're letting her play the game a lot better than they did before. They're accentuating her big strength, which, you know, close heavy kick, right? Letting her do a lot more interesting stuff from me, letting her get a lot more damage. She has a lot more utility with a juggle anywhere property. Her hammer gimmicks, uh, now that the level two uh, versions got buffed, they're a lot more plus and a lot. There may be something you can bust out every now and then. But yeah, so Darley was definitely in the doldrums before. And now, even if she isn't top tier or nothing, I think she can play the game. So she's definitely a winner. Okay, so Rio. Of course we were going to talk about Rio. He has a lot of really strong changes, but let's talk the obvious one. And that's the machine gun punches. Now that they do less overall combo scaling, it wildly ups his damage. And Anchor Rio is definitely going to be a thing. And there we go. So, Touch of Death combo over a thousand damage kills everyone in the cast. And, you know, this is King of Fighters, right? So... Now, it's not necessarily like a rare concept or anything, but I want you just to appreciate the no fuss, no muss of it. There was no elaborate setup. It was just hop kick in the close normal and the command normal and the like basic I confirm. And I didn't need to uh, burn max. There was no blue max for the damage bonus or any of that stuff. It was just a normal ass combo. That was it, <laughs> you know? And uh, that definitely didn't kill before... Uh, this patch so just that change alone with the machine gun punches scaling less leads to more damage across the board especially in the corner no fuss no muss this is no ash crimson stuff you don't need to worry about stun you just touch them and then you kill them it's pretty basic and you know what rio's a pretty basic guy so works out so just in and of itself his damage potential wildly going up pretty big so that was five bars. Let's uh, say a three bar example. So say they whiff like an uppercut or something mid screen, right? Pretty common scenario. So it's just a guaranteed punch scenario, three bars. So for two and a half bars, 740 damage, right? Off a easy peasy punish situation. So the buff doesn't help his neutral, doesn't help his attack or whatever, but it just helps his damage, and that's enough. Now that said, there is buffs that help his neutral and help his tech. So this is part of the reason why Rio is on the thumbnail of the video. Uh stuff like heavy Kooken now has triple, quadruple the range it used to. So his ability to just control neutral, like he has decent enough buttons and all that kind of stuff, but not like top of the class, right? But now this, like, that's really, really good. Like, you know, people who hop a lot, this move crushes hops very easily. So if you're just looking for that avenue to just control the airspace as well as control on the ground, this is the button. There's basically no real way to go wrong with it other than people start doing like full jumps, which, you know, them's the brakes right but yeah this is like an omega range poke now basically and you can for the most part use it as a sledgehammer because uh obviously you don't want to do it too close because it is not safe right but at the ranges you want to use it at like it's barely negative to even plus if you space it properly which is wild and on the tech stuff there's a really strong quality of life change so the parries so the forward like parry if you do the cancel version can now be whiffed cancelled. And you might wonder, well, what's the point of that? Well, it actually just helps your general combo structure. It doesn't allow you to do things you can't do already, at least to my knowledge. But say something like this. Crouch Heavy Punch, right? Crouch Heavy Punch is one of the buttons you want to use 
for juggles with the EX machine gun punch, for example, because it has a juggle anywhere property. But sometimes the cancel window can be a little strict and you gotta be like really fast, right? Now, instead of just going down punch and then just going forward back forward from down, which can be rough, it can be difficult. You're gonna sit down and forward and light kick, which now opens you up into the uh, counter. And then from there, then you can go for your machine gun punch. Basically, it's canceling the recovery of the uh, crouch heavy or any button you want to use and extending the window for you to get your special move off. So it's basically just a giant quality of life buff because before, if you're not too fast, you're just not going to get it, right? Now, I can be slow and still get it. Granted, if you're very, very fast, you can still do everything, right? But not everyone necessarily has that level of speed. So it just makes combos easier, basically. Uh, you can use that empty time between you entering that motion and the new empty cancelable counter just extends your special cancel window. So that's really cool. And there's a bunch of other stuff, sure, like that aren't as big of a deal, at least yet. Uh, like, you know, when you're going for basic hit confirms, you can now cancel that into the big old punch. Big old punch being plus on block. Also now it knocks the enemy less far away when they're blocked. So hopefully gimmicks and all that kind of stuff. Cause before the idea was like, I'm gonna do this and that's my block string, right? But now I don't have to necessarily commit to that. I can leave a gap. And if you let that gap rock, instead of being slightly negative, like here, I am now slightly positive and also closer and also deals a lot of guard gauge damage, right? So. These are the kind of things that are interesting as well that I think will expand over time. But yes, in the end, the big strength is simply Rio's hammer, as it were, got a lot bigger. He just does more damage in most conceivable scenarios. And he was already a lot better than most people gave him credit for. So I expect you can see probably his uh, popularity grow a fair bit in season two of KOF 15. Now, when we talk the loser section, this is where I'm gonna cop out a little bit. Cause it's not one of those deals. Oh no, everybody's a winner. No, obviously not. I'm not going to do that to you. But uh, the people who got nerfed and all that, like a lot of the nerfs don't change things too much. Like Kula, Kula got nerfed, right? And uh, you know, the nerfs, there was a fair list of them. Uh, but is Kula still one of the best characters in the game? Top 10 at minimum? I would say yes, absolutely. Someone like uh, Jenny. Jenny's probably still top three. And she had a long list of nerfs and all that kind of stuff, but it didn't change how she played. She just does less damage, right? So she's quote unquote worse, but if she's still running the game in the end, does that make her a loser? I can't say she's a loser of the patch. Like a few people I could say is legit kind of got creamed. Like Cronin, definite reduction in power. Absolutely. Yashiro probably hit the hardest of everybody. Yashiro definitely isn't feeling the same as he did before. But in the end, is even this crippled nerf Yashiro better than, I'd say, half the characters in the game? Yeah, probably, right? So it's one of those deals where I think this is a very strong patch because I can't say anyone's just out of the running. Will people drop Yashiro? Yeah, absolutely. But Yashiro is not necessarily a worthless character either. For the vast majority of the cast, this is just a rising tide raises all boats kind of deal. Everyone's doing good. Even people who barely got changed, like Blue Mary, I can't even remember her change log, but. It basically didn't exist, right? But it was positive, so she's ever so slightly better, I suppose. But yeah, overall, just everyone, with some exceptions, is doing good. So it's not everyone's a winner, but most people are winners. If you want to post in the comments, well, Rupamonger, you forgot this character, you forgot that character. I just don't want to make a video covering every single character in the game again. I already did that. Check that video out. Please like and subscribe, right? That all said though, uh, when it comes to season two of King of Fighters, I think this game is in a very strong position competitively. I still think some of the old demons, some of the old devils will still be around, but I think the option for character variety, if you wanna be in a competitive environment, is the best it's ever been in this game right now. The most amount of characters that are viable for competitive play is this moment right now, and it could get even better yet in the future, but as it stands, this game is in a pretty good place and I'm very happy with it. So that said, please let me know what you think. 
If you have anyone you want to specifically highlight that you really like the changes, post it in the comments below. And otherwise, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some King of Fighters. We're making this is the love we're making